PDP. Though, uh, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. Uh, it does look like a lot of people expected that it's going to be a new era for the PDP post uh, the Supreme Court judgment. But it does not look like, like it's happening in that manner, considering that a senator of the PDP is being referred, his case is being referred to the disciplinary committee. Are things well with the PDP? Yeah, by the grace of God, we, be, we pray things are going to be well with PDP. Uh, I share in the optimism that things were going to be fine with PDP after the Supreme Court judgment without going into the rhetorics of her, whether the, the Supreme Court judgment was good or bad. But quite unfortunately, the McAfee-led caretaker committee had a misconceived interpretation of what the Supreme Court judgment said. You see, political parties are creation of law for Nigerian citizens to ventilate and associate in furtherance of fundamental rights of association so that they can satisfy the quest for power. In that process, there are regulations. We are not friends by being in the same party. We are brought together by the guiding principle of that party, which is the constitution of the party. And the manifesto of the party is our guiding principle in government. If we now have issues that we don't follow the guidelines of the party, which is the constitution, the natural habitat is the court. And that is basically why people go to court. And for a party seeking to be in government, to indulge in arbitrary administration and culture of impunity is quite unfortunate. We could have been this in the past. We thought that the impunity era is over in the PDP. That's what I also believe. The era of just deciding things against due process should have been out. Take, for instance, in this particular issue that we, we are faced with. The Senator Kashamo was being alleged to have instigated Nigerian police, which is an indictment on the Nigerian police, because there is a subsisting judgment which binds the Nigerian police to ensure the breakdown of law and order does not happen in Ogun State by virtue of distortion of an ESCO legitimately constituted with a lifespan that is fixed by the condition of that party. In flagrant disobedience of that judgment, the caretaker committee seek to di dissolve that ESCO illegally. Naturally, the people that are disenfranchised are to complain to police and their direct order to the police you to know, ensure. You, you know what, what goes around. And the word is that, uh, to a large extent, that the PDP on a large ex at, at a, to a large extent, uh, in the PDP in Ogun said the, the word is that Senator Buruji Kachamu is aware of how those people were arrested, members and leaders of the party in Ogun State. You, you are not getting the point. The people that were arrested were also aware of why they were arrested. The people that illegally constituted them into what would make them to be arrested was aware. And that's the unfortunate thing about leadership. If a leadership cannot submit to the rule of law, it is good night for that country. These are the kind of people that will be president. But These one would think that, that for example, governors. Senator Kashamu, for example, a senator, I mean, uh, would have taken the case to the highest level of the party before this case would have even gone out of hand in F any case. Fantastic. It is, it's embarrassing that we find ourselves in this kind of situation. Let me make it clear that for a law-abiding citizen to stand up for his right, is commendable rather than for people to be blaming that person. Because we are not in a banana republic where you resort to self-help. If you feel convinced that your rights are being trampled up by anybody, the best and the reasonable thing to do in a civilized environment is to approach the court, which is what is happening in this case. Unfortunately, like I said, Senator McAfee, our respected leader, had a misconceived interpretation of the Supreme Court judgment is assuming that because of the Supreme Court judgment that uh, the convention of the party is supreme, 
that judgment itself has suspended Nigerian constitution, which is not correct. The Nigerian constitution has been administered by the courts. There is a subsisting court judgment that says the ESCO in Ogun State is valid and must continue to be in place till 2020. Nobody should touch it. You shouldn't dissolve it. You shouldn't tamper with their legitimate rights. I haven't gone through the Congress and emerged victorious. We have written several letters to him. But we have sent appeals to him. Not only that, we have, in deference to law, went back to court, because I say we, because I believe in that ESCO. The Biodio ESCO is our ESCO. We had appealed to him, to, to our leader, and even in the, in, the, in the PDP constitution, there is a proviso that if you appeal to the ESCO and they don't reply within certain days, it is an offense. He has refused to reply to us. But the, the issue is that, a big question though, that there's always a problem within the PDP in Ogun State. Why is there a notorious nature of the structure or the running of affairs in Ogun State? You see, I take an exception to the notorious in the context that if you are aware of your rights, people are want to think you are difficult. If you, are, if, you, if you don't know your left from right, people tend to think you, you are amenable. Everybody likes amenable people. Even current travels through the area of least resistance. Take, for instance, in Ogun State. If in 2011, we had a government, PDP government, that was concluding eight-year tenure. And circumstantially, without apportioning blame, the then governor found it inconvenient for him to resolve with his party and left for PPN. Left for PPN, left for labor, came back in 2015 and wanted a vacuum so that he can continue as if nothing happened. There's going to be a commotion. Yeah, because and, and not the major issue now is that yes, what I mean. after the Supreme Court judgment, a lot of people would think that when they, that there are about, it's not only Ogun State, Kwa State was part, Lagos State was part of is those it? states where the party has said it will set up uh, a caretaker, uh, an in, a, a intermediary committee to steer the affairs of the party. Why is Ogun State case different? different? Fantastic. It, Ogun State is different by benevolence of God to grow our democracy because right things had been done that could prevent the illegality of the dissolution. In all the other instances, it was not as if they were correct. Because the, the, the process that led to the creation of the caretaker committee was sacrosanct. There was a net meeting. In the net meeting, it was agreed that there should be guidelines for, for, for Congresses into wards, local government, states, and national. Now we have done the wards, local government, uh, states, there had been another net meeting where all those ESCOs had been ratified. Then we went for the national convention, there was promotion. To now come around, because some people didn't support you when you are circumstantially put at the ends of affairs of a party and be dissolving them so that your friends can now take over the party, it's not legal. For but unfortunately, sake. with due respect, my brother, a lot of these ESCOs had not got experiences of courts confirmation of their high schools, which is the unique part of the Ogun State. Because we have had issues of the former governor in league with certain people who had contested and currently serving in the federal house on the platform of that ESCO that was seeking re-election. We had reason to have gone to court to validate that ESCO which is the saving grace for Ogun State. The other states that are unfortunate are just unfortunate right. because they did not have that kind of judgment. But with this judgment, it becomes so ridiculous mm. for a party that had been in government for 16 years, that had been notorious for impunity, that Nigerians had been dissatisfied because we, should, we shouldn't take whatever economic adversity the country is in now. It's not a license for public misadministration of those past that our people didn't like. We're supposed to have come with a new PDP that is law-abiding. Mr. Sariki, let me quickly put this to you. Uh, Senator Buruji Kashamu has been referred to the disciplinary committee. And with the way things are, and the manner in which things are going right now, 
it does face a suspension of some level, or the disciplinary sure. measures of some level, if it does not back down and is group. And also, it's even the die of die of faction. Not, sure, it's not the issue of group. Let me talk to you as a Nigerian. We have a stake in this country, and this is the only country we can call our, call our own. If we allow court orders and court judgments to become tissue paper, we are finished in this country. And we are living witnesses to the adversity that we have been faced with maladministration, breakdown of law and other, and all those sort of things. As we speak, there is a subsisting court order that prevents this caretaker committee from referring Senator Kachamu, including yours truly that is talking to you, to any disciplinary commission. We are entitled to the reliefs of court. But do it you believe in the supremacy of the party not... for resolution of peace? Let me tell you one thing. When you are small, you tend to take contracts as a big deal. Even in my private business, I seldomly do businesses now without agreement. It, it's just a ritual because that's the tidy thing to do. People that talk, you see, unfortunately, people that have no background of even elementary management of enterprise are aspiring to our high office in Nigeria. But there's nothing big about going to court. If we have an engagement mm. to clear doubts, like some of my friends will say, we'll, we'll put it on paper. All right. if, if there's certain things wrong, the courts are there. Let me, let me quickly the ask you this before, be, before we anchor on, uh, on this segment. Uh, what is the way out from your own perspective? Now, the case looks like there is a stalemate. There's no stalemate. If you say there's a stalemate, you are rubbishing Nigerian sovereignty, you are rubbishing our judiciary, you are telling us that judgments in Nigeria is worthless, you are telling us that holders of court of Nigeria is meaningless. In your, own, in your own party perspective, That's they do believe that if the case that they gets outside of the party, that you listen. should submit to the supremacy of the party. Yeah. That's what you your see, party says. See, see, well, let me tell you something. I am a founding member of this party. I have been a living witness to the arbitrariness of the past, and we pray to God it is going to stop. There used to be a time when as elementary thing as holding primaries are being manipulated, and the party kept on feeling that there's a Supreme Court judgment that they must submit names. Mm. You look at the disgraceful Amishi judgment. Look at this issue of 36 governors sitting together, not being able to calculate what is the majority of 36 right. eminent people. No, we, we need to go continue now. continue this madness. All right. Uh, Prince Sir, you've seen us told us what is the way out, just in, in way, just a statement. The way out is for us to tell them, to, to show to Nigerians that we are indeed dissatisfied with the shortcomings of our government in the past, and we will emphasize the good attributes of our government and indicate right. our readiness to obey court order and follow due process Prince in Chagun, governance. Prince Chagun Seriki, chieftain of the People's Democratic Party uh, from Ogun State, thank you so much for joining us on the program tonight.